Definitely something that I look forward to every single day when I walk into school, to be the voice of the students, to make a difference. And I think the students that are here today, um, if anything else, be willing to learn, uh, willing to listen, and as well as anything that you hear tonight, be willing to apply that, um, because as he will talk to you guys today, it must be your obligation, your responsibility, and your duty to do so. Um, well, without further ado, I would like to introduce um, New York Times best-selling author, seen on CBN, BS, uh, MBSN, Fox News, and contributor of Entrepreneur.com, Business Insider, Forbes, and Wells Fargo Small Business, owner of $3 million businesses that exceed $100 million per year, number one sales expert in the world, sales, yep, um, executive producer and creator of GrandCardoneTV.com, a digital business network home to 40 shows of business success. Let's give a warm welcome to Grand Cardone, guys. So my name is Grant Cardone. If you don't like to read, by the way, if you see me at the end of this, if you'd rather have an MP3 download, it'll be my gift to you uh, to give everybody here a download to your phone. We'll just have to hook you up with a link to my office. I have an office in Miami. I like to read and listen. I immerse myself in content. I have wanted to be famous, and rich, and successful my entire life. Who's with me? And uh, where I was brought up, you didn't talk like that. I was taught, hey, you don't tell people what you really want. You just tell them you want a job. I never just wanted a job. I wanted to be rich so I could help people, and I could help myself, and I could take care of my family. I wanted to be successful, so successful that other people would look to me for advice and information. And I wanted to be famous. Because I have these natural good looks. And I was like, man, I don't want to waste all of this, right? Okay? So, so uh, I, I, I typically, typically, I can be a little braggadocious. I'm giving you my braggadocious side right now so I can kind of push you off into the parts of your mind that, like, I want to stretch out all your thinking right now. If you're in college right now, if you're about to graduate, if you're thinking one day, someday, somehow, some way, you might actually get out of college. And you're even a little scared about it. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you've been out for a long time and you're in that workplace out there in that environment that becomes a little mundane. Like the classes can be mundane sometimes. Okay, not here many. <laughs> Particularly in the economics classes or the finance classes. I spent five years in college in, in a little town in Louisiana, called, a place called Mackey State University. And I really didn't fit in where I went to college. Okay, I didn't go because I wanted to go. I went because my mother had an obligation to my dad, that died when I was 10. And my dad, before he died, said, teach, tell those, those boys have to get a college degree. Have to. That was her responsibility to make sure I went to college. And number two, those boys need to learn how to sell because if they can sell, they can go anywhere and do anything, all right? If you have a phone with you, how many have a smartphone or some sort of droid or, okay, you want to keep it open and you want to open your notepad. I'm going to give you some information. I don't care where you're at in life. 27, 37, 57, 17. Whether you're in the game right now, on the edges of it, you want to get in this thing, you want to bust up, you want to do something big, or you just want to increase a little bit, I can help you, I promise you. When I got out of college, there was 24% unemployment where I worked. I hated college, I'll tell you right now. I would love to have gone to a college like this. I hated the college I went to. I'm an alumni at that college, okay? And uh, that, that I've come back, and I hated college, not because of the college, because of where I was at. I didn't know why I was there. I just didn't know why I was there. I was like, okay, I'm like, what? Why? What am I doing? Now, I'm going to tell you something. I thought that that was about colleges. It's not. you got hundreds of millions of people going to work every day, have no freaking clue why they're going to work. You should look up the word live when you leave here, all right? There's a lawyer right now, tax attorney, right? Actually, call him. All right? Do you want to be audited? How many of you like that? One of your goals is to be audited by the IRS. How many of you have that as a goal? <laughs> you need to put it on your bucket list. If you're not audited by the IRS, it means you're not successful, period. See, it's not on your bucket list, right? 
You're trying to avoid problems. If you avoid problems, you avoid success. You, you don't have one without the other. Would you agree? Yeah. You want to be in a relationship? You want to have love? You want, you want to go to heaven? How many of you want to go to heaven? Amen. you got to die. <laughs> you got to die if you want to go see what's on the other side. You feeling me? Look, you want to be successful? You have to go through, you have to go through, 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 through failure to get to success. You got, it's painful. I'm telling you, it's painful. It's painful to be successful. Okay? It's more painful not to be. This is what I did not hear in college. This is what I wish they would have been telling me. It is painful not to be successful. It is painful to succeed. I'm going to tell you this little tip, okay? You want to write this down. This is a life changer for you. It is easier to be successful than it is to fail. It is easier to succeed than it is to fail. Failure is a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of work. And you, next time you see that homeless guy on the street corner, and he's over there like begging, and you're like, man, that guy needs to get a job. That guy is working. It's hard. It's ugly. It's terrible. He's extremely creative. Just like when you skip class, right? It's like when you try to get that great, you get creative, don't you? Right? When you get lazy, you got to get really creative to make up for the lazy, right or wrong. All right? So tonight, really, really what I want to talk to you about is what you're getting into and what, what's wanted and needed out there in the marketplace. Because if you can bring them to the marketplace what's wanted and needed, they'll pay you. Right? If you give them just whatever you were trained to do, they may or may not pay you. All right? May or may not pay you. I can't promise they're going to pay you. The degree I got, there was 24% unemployment where I worked. One out of four people. These were real numbers. This is when the government actually reported accurate data. One out of four people were out of work where I lived. Okay? I could not get a job in my degree, so I had to get a job in sales, and I hated sales. I hated the idea that I spent five years getting an accounting degree, and now I have to sell something. I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is crazy, man. And I had to sell clothes, shoes, ties, stuffies, little pocket squares for eight bucks. You know, like I got paid 56 cents on a pocket square. How many of your parents taught you? Save the pennies. How many of you taught, were taught that? How many of you taught this? A penny earned is? No, no, it's a penny saved is? No, it's a penny man. <laughs> See, your mom and dad, your mom and dad, have, they have calculations they continue to pass on to you that, that are not really accurate today. The world is changing so fast today, so fast, so violently fast. Like right now, my wife, how many people are on that, though? Well, we had to restart. That's fine. Okay. There's, more, there's four times more people watching me on a live stream right now than are in this room. If I open up this camera right here, I'll just do it just for, for giggles. This is an opportunity. It's never been easier. There's never been more opportunity in the world, on this planet, never in the history of mankind, for somebody to be successful. Never, ever. This is your moment, folks, but you've got you to be game ready right now because there's so much noise in the environment, so much noise in the marketplace, so much competition that you would not even think is competition. So let me just see. Where am I today? I'm at... Uh, I'm at... Southeastern University. Can I say that? What else should I say? Go sharks. Eat something. <laughs> now, why am I doing that? Because I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to disseminate through noise in the universe. While I do this scope, this is called periscope. Uh, I don't have a signal here. Um, see, th this is the stuff you're going to compete with. Okay, I'll go and be a guest here. Just give me one second. I'll do this. I guarantee you there'll be 1,200 to 2,000 people on this phone where I'm putting out communication. How many of you, your parents taught you not to talk to strangers? <laughs> How many of you, your parents taught you don't talk to strangers? Let me just see a hand up here. How many parents in the room? Let me see a hand up here, parent. How many of you passed on this, this wisdom to your children? Not even knowing what you're saying. <laughs> don't talk to strangers. The strangers have everything you want. That's right. <laughs> you want to write this down, right? Strangers have every single thing you want. Your dreams, your dreams sit in the hands of a stranger, somebody you don't yet know. You must meet strangers. How many of you watch Shark Tank? Huh? What's the question? After you do it, the guy walks up to him and does the picture. Look, I just made an idea, man. It's an idea nobody's ever heard of this idea. This idea is so sick, it's so crazy, it's so unbelievable, it's phenomenal. It's got this little thing I've been telling you, huh? 
What's the next question? Everybody say, cool. Huh? Do I have a pen? Do I have a pen? Oh, do I have a pen? Yes, I did. You did. And he does all that, right? What's the next question? Say again. Hey, dude, what are your sales? Every Friday night, it comes down to one question every time. How much have you sold? Uh, nothing. <laughs> it's a good idea, man. It's a great idea. Go sell something, son. Right? So the pitch is important. Getting in the room is important. But look, hey, you got to tell somebody you sold something. Now, I'm telling you that to tell you this. If you can bring revenue to the table, what you did last week, last month, last year, two years ago, if you can bring revenue... Cake, paper. If you can bring a, a, a business to the game, you're alive and well. If you can't bring revenue to the game, he talks about economics and finances. Cake, paper. How, what do y'all call money? What do you call money here? Huh? What do you call it? Cheese. What else you call it? Who's got your money? Who's got your money right now? Somebody else has got your money. I wake up every morning. Who's got my money? Who's got my money? Who's got my money? Everybody try this. Who's got my money? Oh, man. My wife does it better than you do. Who's got my money? She wakes up every morning. My husband's got my money. Right? So, look, you can have fun with this thing. This thing is not, I'm not a crusty old businessman. All right? I got four companies. We'll do just shy of $100 million in sales this year. They were started with no money, zero money, just hustle. Who's got hustle? But you got to get over some things that you've been taught by your, by your upbringing. The way, the way you were brought up and the way I was brought up. How many in the room were brought up like this? When, you, when your mom fed you dinner, she said, with that dinner, there was a sermon that went with every dinner, and it went like this. Eat it all. How many of you got that message? What, what, what's your mom telling you right now? There's people starving on this planet. Eat it all. Right? She was telling me there's scarcity. Then she said, don't talk to strangers. Right? Because somebody in some town, somewhere in America, who knows, maybe another country, some kid got picked up and kidnapped, and now that circles the globe as like that's what happens every day in America. Doesn't happen every day in America. I got a three-year-old and a six-year-old. I teach them to talk to strangers. So look, you need to talk to every person you don't know. Your toys, your clothes, your gifts, <laughs> your dreams, everything you want. Your candy, your bubble gum. Some stranger's got it. You go talk to them. A lady heard me say this. Okay? I'm flying from Venezuela. I was doing a seminar for five days on sales. All I did for five days on the ship was talk about how to sell something. Five days. You want me to sell a pen? Yes. You want me to sell a glass of water? Piece of cake. Five days of nothing but teaching sales strategies. How to open, get past the gatekeeper, do a job interview. A job interview is a sales pitch. Would you agree? Yes. That's all it is. It's not an interview. If you're just being interviewed, you're the receiver. You don't want to be the receiver. Receivers get nothing. Nothing. Receivers get nothing. Spectators get nothing. That's why I tell you, take notes. You want to walk out with some information you can use. Only write down the stuff you're like, you know, I can actually eat that. I could, I, could, I could use that in the marketplace tomorrow. So let me just do this now, if I can do this. You've got to multitask today. Man, I still don't have to sit in here. I don't know why. Oh, wow. Life is so disappointing sometimes, right? Life is so... Oh, because I wasn't being a guest. I am a guest. All right? So this is the real world you live in, okay? Things are going to happen to you all the time that you want to plan on. This is why I wrote this book called The 10X Rule. Everybody underestimates how much energy it takes to push into the marketplace. You will be disappointed, discouraged, saddened constantly. Constantly. Hopefully you will. Hopefully you're going to be scared every freaking day of your life. I bless you with fear. <laughs> May you be blessed with fear constantly. Because the truth is, if you're, you're, you're a little scared, there's opportunity. Do you agree? Yes. If you're not scared anymore, you're not living life, folks. Okay? You're not living life. Everybody wants to go to sleep and have dreams. Man, your dreams come true when you wake up. That's when your dreams are going to come true. It's going to be when you wake up in the morning and you go say, hey, who can I meet today? This is what I wish they would teach in college. Who can I go meet? I, I wish in one semester that you had 10 people. You had to make a list of 10 dream people. And you had to have, you had to spend time with one or two or three of those people. 
Because that's going to that's gonna require every skill that you have. Right? Got to make a phone call. If you search me on YouTube, this is a YouTube channel, by the way, behind me. Okay? YouTube's available to everybody, right? Okay? Race, religion, beliefs. Nobody can keep me from using this. There's no form in there that says, okay, too short, too tall, too fat, too skinny, right? Slow, fast, whatever. No, no, anybody can use this. What is YouTube? It's a connection to strangers. Everything I want in my life, everything I want, a stranger has it. The people at CNBC, CNN, right? Entrepreneur Magazine, Wells Fargo, Business Insider, Place Inside Life. Periscope, okay, this thing I'm trying to do right now, I don't know why I'm even so committed to doing this, but this is how I do it, okay? I'm obsessed. How many of you call those CD, ADD, obsessive, compulsive? Good for you, you have gifts. <laughs> this is not a problem. A guy tells me in a meeting, he's, he's sitting across from a meeting with me in Miami, 25 miles from here, he's sitting across from me. I own four companies. I got 16 things going on in my head while I do this presentation and while I'm doing this. And the camera chick's walking up. She's going to want to get the great shot of me, right? Right? I'm trying to please most of you in this audience. I got my wife here worried that I'm going to say something to offend somebody. I probably will. <laughs> and I'm trying to do this at the same time. Guy looks at me and says, man, well, you, got, you got an attention deficit disorder. I don't have an attention deficit except for you. I got a shortage of attention for your presentation right now. Take responsibility that you have not been able to get me to close the 16 other open windows that I currently have going on right now as an entrepreneur. You're going to be calling on people that can make decisions about whether to hire you or not, right? Go Sharks. I got to get the Go Sharks in there, right? Eat something. Didn't I say that? Yes. So I'm going to come back to it. And we're going to go ahead and string this out. Now, this is available to everybody. It's available to everybody. The only thing that, 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 that bothers me a little bit about this is that, you know, I got some empty seats in here. I hate to show people that. 15, 17, 20, 27, 31, 33, 39, 41, 47, 50. I'm going to fill a room up right now, okay? Uh, 88, 95. 102 people. These are people coming. These are strangers, people I don't know. I'm flying back from Venezuela. My daughter says, Papa, I want some cookies. I said, go talk to a stranger. Why are you talking to me? I didn't bring any cookies. Get out of the program. You're maybe three years old. When are you going to grow up? <laughs> Jump on those little freaking fat feet you got. Those little short legs. Bounce on those knees. You walk up to that flight attendant. You say, hey, man, get me some cookies. <laughs> you got some cookies? Okay, 204 people in here right now on this stream. Why would I want to meet all these people? I don't know these people. You guys are probably crazy. <laughs> what am I trying to do? I'm trying to grab their attention for a minute. I told my daughter, I said, you want cookies, you get all out of that chair, onto your feet. I don't, I don't want to talk to people. Good to know. I eat the cookie monster. Somebody else has got your cookies. There's 238 people on this plane that are trapped for the next two and a half hours. Somebody's got your cookies, and it ain't me. <laughs> right? Yes, sir. I gave her the inspiration to do it. She jumps up out of her chair. She jumps up out of her chair. She walks up to the flight attendant and says, Hey, Mr. 245, okay? I'm not talking to him. If I was talking to him, I'd tell him to go swipe at the chair, okay? So, so two, uh, she jumps up out of her chair. She goes to the flight attendant and says, Hey, Mr. Like a three-year-old, right? Mister, you got some cookies? He's like, no. That's what's going to happen to you when you go into the marketplace. People are going to tell you no before they tell you yes. Okay? The way to go from no to yes is through maybe. The way to go from no to yes is through maybe. You cannot get from no to yes without visiting through the zip code of maybe. If you can get somebody from no to say maybe, my wife is married to me. She said no. I got her to say maybe. She had babies. <laughs> you single guys? How many single guys in the room? Oh, I can help you out. <laughs> I can help you out. I got game, dog. Okay? I got game, man. You want a little, you want, you want a little trick? Yes, sir. Single guy right here? You want, you want a little one, bro? Okay, you see the one you want? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. We're, going, we're looking forward into the future, man. Be positive. You see her right now, okay? Now, there's three guys right around her. I don't want you to say anything to her. 
I want you to tell those three guys, man, you're looking good, dude. You're looking good. Man, I like your shoes, man. I like your shirt. Man, you're looking good today. And ignore her for a second. When you turn, she's going to be like, what about me? It works every time. <laughs> right there, it works every time, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. So look, they didn't teach you this in, in, in your economics class, your history class, your grammar class, did they? Look, you need to know how to get what you want. How many agree with that? You got to be clear on what you want, though. You got to be clear on what you want. What do you want? What job do you want? Who do you want to work for? All right. So I'm going to show you a video here. Uh, let's see. I'll show you a little video just to open. I was going to open with this video, but I came up here and just stole my own video. Scene. <laughs> I'm sick of hiring people that are uninspired. I'm done with people that make more excuses than they can make money. I'm over the book smart and the people stupid. I'll throw up again if I hear about what you did rather than what you can do. This isn't a contest, this isn't a challenge. This is the way I hire people. And I have two rules. One, find great people. Number two, never tolerate average. And the people that refuse to settle, trust me, if you have even the slightest hint of being a whiner, a crybaby, or a little bitch, I'll find out. This is whatever it takes. Okay, now that, that was to solve a problem, okay? I created a TV show because I couldn't sell my TV show. This is the opportunity to wait you out there right now. Everything is possible today now, okay? The game has changed. 20 years ago, I couldn't create my own TV show. The technology wasn't available. Today, you can do anything you want. This technology that I'm streaming, meet people, cost me nothing. You download an app, boom, you own it. That channel right there in Miami, and, and I live in Miami. We're, we're, we're not in Miami. We're not in, what, what county do I live in? I don't know. See, I run so fast, I don't even know what county I'm in. What day is it? Uh, I'm in the future. Where you at? See, too many people know what day it is. Like, you know what day it is, you're not busy enough. <laughs> right? You got time to criticize other people. You're not busy. You, you, your criticism of me says nothing about me and everything about you. You need haters. You need people criticizing you. You need people, you need people looking at you and deciding that you're not right, you're not this, you're not that, because now they're looking at you. See, the hater, nobody's looking at the hater. And that's why he's hating, because he's not creating. So your game has to be, man, what's the game today? What do I want? What do I want in life? And that means I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to burst through. I'm gonna have to burst through. I'm gonna have to freaking, I'm gonna have to shove through all this freaking noise. She's on this thing called Meerkat. There's Periscope, there's YouTube, there's Facebook, there's noise, there's Rex, there's media, there's CNN, CNBC, all pukey, pukey on you and your family and your dreams. That's what they're doing. Most of the people on Facebook, they're just looking at streams of content, junk video. You allow anything to come at you, anything. Like, what are you doing? And you're not even protecting your dreams. You, you, you have no filters on what you accept. Now, look, I use all these mechanisms, but I'm using them as a player, not as a spectator. Like that YouTube channel right here. Sorry, Robert, I know I'm moving around a little bit, but there's 1,800 videos were dropped on this YouTube channel. This is a free channel. I get more business from YouTube than any other place I get business from. I've gotten more reach for my products than any other channel. So when we moved from Los Angeles to Miami, we had a problem hiring people. And, and, and my office was like, we can't hire people in Miami, man. The talent's no good. People are no good. There's no talent. There's no work ethic. People will show up one time. I'm like, good. Well, why, why, why are you focused on Miami? They're like, what do you mean? I said, why don't we focus on the world? Why would, I, why would I focus? You show me a great company, a great product that's focused on one county. You don't build products like this today. The great companies, Apple, they're everywhere. Starbucks. I was in, what, Prague? Was it Prague? Right? We walk out of a 745-year-old church where we listen to Mozart. It's unbelievable. I walk out. This place has been there 745 years. Unbelievable, beautiful church. What's the name of the place? 
basilica, baby, basilica, say it, okay? okay? We walk out of the basilica, I mean, it's gorgeous church, beautiful, no microphones, no amplifiers, you can hear this from any place in the room, okay? We walk out 200 feet from a 745-year-old church, it's Starbucks. Sitting there, man, figured out some kind of way to get this one little piece of real estate. See, they went into expansion, would you agree? They went into the land of strangers. New languages, new opportunities, new people. That's the way you need to think today, big. You need to think giant, big. This book that we're going to give you copies of, the first hundred, looks like we got you covered. Okay? You know, Elvis wouldn't do a concert if there was an empty seat. You are. <laughs> <laughs> this book is about expansion, horizontal expansion. All right? How many of you want to start your own business? You're going to want to do this. You're going to want to go vertical. Your 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 natural, the way you were brought up, is you're going to want to go vertical, and you're going to want to take care of customers. That's going to be your belief and your idea. I'm going to be a boutique in the beginning. That way, I can handle manage my cash flow, and I'm going to stay nice and tight, and I'm going to take care of a handful of clients. Okay? You can't do that today. You have to go horizontal. Too. You got to go deep and wide. You you must expand. Almost immediately. Or you will die. Now, if you look up the word live in the dictionary, if you look up the word, and you guys should look up more words. You should look up words you don't understand that you think you know. How many of you think you know what the word live means? Live, life. You think you know what it means. You do it every day, but you never looked it up. You should look up the word, look up all the meanings of the word, and then go back to when that word was first created because it could have changed over years. For instance, for instance the word doctor uh, was created in the 1400s or 1200s. You know doctor originally meant? Anybody know? Yeah. Meant teacher. Teacher. People would teach you how to take care of yourself. That didn't happen yet. Now they cut you. <laughs> See, today, the, 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 the uh, person that goes to the hospital becomes basically a spectator, not somebody in charge of their health. Follow what I'm saying? The word life comes from the word live. Also, when you're looking up words, look up the opposite of the word. The opposite of the word live, 100 bucks for anybody that knows it, means succumb. Succumb. That means I'm out of the game. Now, when you look up the word live to succumb, this, it, there's a big range, right? What's that got to do with business? Your business is either alive or it's succumb. Blackberry, succumb. Borders, succumb. Pan America, succumb. Okay? There's businesses right now succumbing. MySpace, over. How fast is that? How about the foot phone? Remember the foot phone? How many remember the little foot phone? Some of you can't even remember the foot phone. Over came out one day and said, oh my gosh, I'm giving one away to everybody. <laughs> okay, literally, months later, that flip phone didn't exist because of technology. And you're in a game right now that's changing so fast. That means you've got to go deep. You've got to go wide. And when you go wide, that means you're going to have to, you're going to be knocking on doors of people you don't know. So when you leave here, you know, the one thing I would tell you to do, one smart thing would be, hey, don't look at a whole industry. How many of you know what industry you want to work in? Or have an idea of what industry you want to be in? Good. What I want you to do is take that industry, if you know that's your industry, and then I want you to get down to three, maybe five max, five people that you want to play with. Five people that you want to work for. Work with, okay? And your biggest thing should not be money with these people. Your biggest thing should be opportunity. People do put too much emphasis on money in the beginning. You should put emphasis on opportunity, not salary. People come to my office every day and they're like, what are you going to pay me? Oh man, you got you got, you got, you got, you got to freaking cloud it up. What you want is opportunity, okay? So when we moved to Miami, what we needed to find was people that were opportunists, entrepreneurial. People that put themselves at risk. That's what an entrepreneur does. An entrepreneur is not a capitalist. A capitalist is like a bank. They lend money out. There's no product. Right? They, 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 they charge you for something you already have or want to use for a little while. There's no product exchange. An entrepreneur does this. I got some money to risk, man. I just had a buddy sold this company for $22 billion. He borrowed $40 million to have a score. Do you know what it's like to wake up every morning with $40, $10 million in debt, $20 million in debt, $30 million in debt, $40 million in debt? And you're like, oh my God, I hope this works. Oh, I hope it works. <laughs> Right? Every day. He's an ethical, moral guy that's not going to walk away from his loans. 
That, these were his dreams. See, what are your dreams? Where are your dreams at? Did you lose your dreams along the way going through high school, society, college? What was the dream, man? Okay, you got your education. That's great. What's the dream? Because the dream is the fuel. Right? When, I, when, when I'm fully in my dream, my wife, we have this a three and a six-year-old and I have my marriage, okay? My wife doesn't want me to give my dreams up. My wife would tell you this. If I ask him to give his dreams up, then he, if he abandons his dreams, he could possibly abandon us. Because once you abandon one thing, you abandon everything, right or wrong. Look, if you'd been, you, why would I abandon something that has been with me longer than I have known her? I've had these dreams since I was three and four years old. I wanted to write books since I was probably five or six. I wanted to be rich since I was eight. Like, like, go back and stir up that stuff. How long have you known you wanted to do something? Because that is probably tied to some purpose that you have. That you would willing, you'd be willing to put yourself at risk in order to get. I'm not talking about education now. I'm not talking about books. I'm not talking about just reading stuff. See, when I read a book, when I read a book, I'm like, I got a money sports right there. I have books that I haven't even opened. The cover, the cover, because of my intention, the cover gave me enough information. There's a book that I, I never read. It was called How to Build a Real Estate Empire. Never read the book. The book's been worth tens of millions of dollars. Because it got me thinking about building an empire. Never even opened the book. People were like, oh, I don't know. It's $30. <laughs> oh, I got to read a book. Here's one chapter right here. Competition is persistence. How many, how many were taught competition is good? Competition is not good for who? Who is competition good? Huh? Yeah, you want to own the market. You want to dominate. You know, the perfect capitalism is actually communism. That is the perfect entrepreneurial model is communism. You don't have a choice. Jack Welch said, the only business you should play in is the ones you can dominate. Own the market, the Googles. Look at Apple. Look at Apple. Apple went deep in the beginning, right? They went straight down. Computers, the software. And you had to buy their computer to get their software. Remember that? You guys are old enough to remember? Straight down. They only had 1% of the market. It wasn't until they went wide, iPods to iTunes, that they became a giant. Right? So you got to go wide, man. You got a business, you got a business idea, you got to go deep, you got to go wide. When you go wide, you need to know everybody. You can't be a boutique today. So, so I'm look, when I look at a book, I'm just looking for omnipresence. You know what the word is? Sick. The word is death. Right? It's crazy. It's so good. You know what it means? To be everywhere all at the same time. Everywhere. Anything assigned omnipresence will have power. Anything that is assigned the concept of omnipresence, the ability to be everywhere all at the same time, will have power. Okay? What, what's some examples of power? Would money be one? Would advertising? Would support? Would testimonials? Would people say, hey, meet this guy, meet this guy, and get on Shark Tank, go to CNBC, would that be power? That's when you're omnipresent. You want to be everywhere all at the same time. That's why I never say no to anything. You ask me to come back here next month, I'm probably going to say, let's do it. Okay? Only thing I would ask you to do is tell all your friends that you missed a freaking bomb last night. No. And I was stupid not showing up for that, drinking a beer, missing that. That was just dumb. Okay? How can you be omnipresent today with no money? Oh, man, it's so easy. It's just crazy. It's cray cray. Since I started this presentation, you see that? 261 people have tweeted me. What would you like me to tell them right now? What can I say to them? Shinza. Huh? Shinza. Let me see if I'm still alive here. Yeah, there. Talk to strangers. Okay. So good. I'm, uh, if you guys, if anybody here is on Twitter, just go ahead and post something, and I'll find you, and I'll get you some attention real quick. Okay. Oh man, that was some terrible presentation. Okay. Sorry guys, sorry I'm periscope. Got to go. See, I can just abuse those people. <laughs> you know why? Because there's seven billion people on this planet, man. I'm not worried about 995 people. You, you can't think about, oh, i got to coddle these people. There's 7 billion people on planet Earth. Get half of them to hate you. And you will be successful beyond it, your wildest imagination. If you could get half of America to hate you, you'd be the President of the United States. 
right? Okay, so let, let me show you what I'm going to do with this. Now, you're going to watch me tweet. I'm going to tweet every 30 minutes of the day, around the clock. I'll probably drop 40 or 50 of these on Twitter every day. I don't even know what I'm doing most of the time, but I'm going to communicate something. I'm going to communicate over and over until I figure out what am I saying about myself, my brand, my company. What am I saying? What am I saying to tell the world something? So I know people are going to tell you, watch what you put on social media. Look, you've got a bigger issue if you don't put something on social media. Okay? You don't want to be stupid. You're not in this room if you're going to do something stupid on social media. I'm going to find it. I'm going to see it. Okay? So what you want to do right here, but there's a lot of other places you can get in trouble. I mean, if you're going to be stupid, you're going to be stupid. Would you agree? But do something. Let me see. I think I know your, your, your Twitter handle here, by the way. Y'all? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I don't know what kind of computer this is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that it? How do I operate? There you are, because I follow you guys. What's the best school in, in the world? <laughs> no kidding, man. 100%. 100% GC, guaranteed. <laughs> How do I do a percent? Percent? Because <laughs> I can't find it, man. Because it's a, uh, it's, I don't know what this machine is. This, machine, this, this is a Jurassic Park machine. <laughs> percent the uh, guarantee. You see, all right. See, I can say anything I want to it. There's no regulation. I can say almost anything I want as long as it doesn't include ISIS. <laughs> you get attention? Do I have your attention? Do I have your attention? Yeah. Hey, you got to get attention, folks. You're going to go on that job interview? You need to ask the guy, do I have your attention? <laughs> <laughs> you better do that. You better do that. They're not going to know you came in the room, bro. Nobody's going to know you were even there. They're going to look at 40 applicants, okay? We did a TV show just so I could actually get to meet people. Who are you? In the state of Florida, I can't ask you anything about you. So what we did was rather than doing a job interview to solve our problem in Miami with talent, what we did was, man, let's do a TV show. We won't do a job interview. We'll do a TV show, we'll call it whatever it takes. Why would I call it whatever it takes? Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for whatever it takes. Like, because if you'll do whatever it takes, my wife, for instance, okay, when I met her, she's like, look, I'm not interested. Why? Why? She told her friends, he's too short. <laughs> it's not an objection. It's a complaint. <laughs> Little man. <laughs> okay. It, it's a complaint. That's all that is. That, that, that's not a reason. Do you know that you're guaranteed success? Then you can guarantee success with one simple datum. One simple thing. I knew for sure she would marry me. I knew for sure, no matter how many times she said, no, no, no. I called her thir uh, 26 times over 13 months. Twice a month, I called. Leave a message. I just knew it was a matter of time. Because here's the deal. You will be successful. You are guaranteed success when you meet the right level of activity. As long as you exert enough effort into the environment, you're guaranteed success. Period in the story. There is no exception to that rule. Okay? If you're taking notes, you want to write this down. Have always or end up with nevers. Have some always or you're going to end up with nevers. You understand? Always. You single guys, always go say hi. You ladies, always go introduce yourself to the people that can forward your career. You know what they call that? If a lady does that? Gold diggers. Okay? How many of you tell don't be a gold digger? No offense, but you're stupid if you're not digging for gold. <laughs> Why would you go to college and not go dig for gold? <laughs> what are you thinking? Let me go look for a dead beat. <laughs> I'm going to go take whatever comes my way. But, well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you say, like, hey, man, I want to look for some people that are, that, that are in good financial condition. Why would you want to look for somebody that's got financial problems? Financial, your financial problems is an indication of problems. Right? Period. That's the, that's the reality of the situation. I was broke at 25 years old. Oh, a guy came up to me and says, look, son. I'm like, oh, God, it's so terrible. I owe the government. I shouldn't be going to college. 
I shouldn't have borrowed the money. Oh my God, oh my God. He's like, hey, there's so much money on this planet. It's unbelievable. Okay? We printed $4 trillion. How much? How much money have we printed in the last eight years? Fifteen trillion, right? Yeah. We've been printing money for freaking two thousand years in this planet. I don't know what the big news is. Oh, did we print a ten million dollars, ten trillion dollars? We, the first dollars were printed. It's all printed. Would you agree? What's the big deal, man? It's all printed. There's no shortage of money. There's a shortage of people going for it. There's a shortage of people talking about it. There's a shortage of people writing about it. Saying, I want some money, man. How many of you want some money? You know, you know the people that don't want money, the people that gave up on it. I don't want those people working for me. So when we did this interview, we pushed it out. We put it out on some feeds. Hey, we're doing a job. We're doing an a, a interview for a TV show. <laughs> we're looking for a TV show. We're going to do a TV show about a job interview. Now what questions can I ask? I can ask anything. The government does not regulate a TV show. I can do anything. Jump off the bridge. Let me see your phone. Okay, who's got a phone? Okay, imagine coming to this job interview. Imagine coming to this job interview. I said, I tell you, bring all your stuff, stand in front of me, and this is the interview. Let me see your phone. And I grab the guy's phone, and I start going through his photos. <laughs> who's that, man? <laughs> Who is that? Uh, 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 uh. Is that your wife? No. Uh -uh. We pushed them through a whatever it takes day. Okay? Once we found out that they were at least ethical, once we searched their Facebook, their Twitter, because I could search anything now. Okay? I could find out everything I wanted about this person. Look, I really don't care how you live your life. But I do care kind of the remnants of the stuff you've been leaving around you. I can go down to your car right now and tell something about you. Would you agree? Yes. So what's your car look like, man? What's your car look like? See, I can't do that on the job interview. I can do it on a TV show. Right? I can do it on a TV show. I go in the guy's car. Let me see, man. Oh, man, you couldn't even. There's no way. I'll do whatever it takes, Mr. Cardo. Whatever it takes, anything. What can you do for me? Everything. I can do everything. Good. Jump off the building and fly. <laughs> if you can fly, I'll give you a job, right? <laughs> oh, I'll give you that. Good, then you're a liar. Because you just said you can do everything. Never say in a job interview you can do everything. Ever. Because you can't, man. Nobody can do everything. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Well, what can you do, man? What can you do? Who are you really? Who are you 24 hours a day? Because if you could be somebody exceptional 24 hours a day, you could be somebody exceptional in that marketplace. And it's never been easier, folks. It's never been easier. Okay? The common denominator on planet Earth today is so low. It's average. I write about it in this book. I write about the four. How many of you have read this book? Okay, this book is awesome. Okay? You guys, make sure you get the audio. I'll give it to you. All right? It, th this book is a miraculous book. It's a, it's, it's a book that's going to be like, oh, what am I thinking, man? I mean, it's going to wake you up. Because if you're not woken up, if your eyes aren't completely open, you're going to miss the opportunities. See, I wake up in the morning, I'm looking for problems. Most of planter is looking to avoid problems. But problems are where your opportunity are. Do you know why people buy things? To solve a problem. The only reason anybody buys anything is to solve a problem. From the guy that's a drug addict, to the guy that goes to rehab, to the guy that downloads, to the guy that uh, something on his phone, to the person that takes a photo, you're trying to solve a problem. Nobody buys a drill because they want a drill. They buy a drill because they want a hole in a wall, right? And then they put the drill up and they never look at it again. You don't buy a car to get back and forth. I don't buy a watch. To tell time, my watch, I don't even set my watches. I don't even set them, man. I got a freaking clock on my phone. I buy watches to solve problems. My money's bored. <laughs> Money don't sleep, but it gets bored. If it gets bored enough, it says, let's go visit the watch shop. <laughs> right? So in this book, I talk about four levels of action. Y'all know what the four levels are? Oh, man. 
Ada? Uh, huh? What? Ada? What do you say? Attention. No, man, that's a good one. <laughs> Number one. Okay, no action. There's no action. So you want to write this down. There's no action. I didn't do anything. See all these empty chairs in here? Would that, would that be no action? I know who those people are, man. I don't want them working for me. Making bad choices. Or they, they just got bad luck. We would even ask this in the interview. Hey, on a scale from one to ten, are you lucky or unlucky? Oh, I'm the unluckiest person I I don't want you here. <laughs> Do bad things happen to you? Yeah, man. Good. Get away from me. <laughs> you got fleas, man. You got fleas. Right? I don't want you around me. You got bad luck. You think bad. You think small. You think little, right? I don't need it, man. When's the last time you were in a wreck? Two days ago. Stay away from me. <laughs> I don't want you bad luck. If you're a victim, I don't want you around me. Like, I'm just telling you all that to tell you this. You, 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 you got, look, I got 7 billion people I can hire from. There's no shortage of people on this planet. I don't care if you're 17 years old, 27 years old, or 77. You show me some hustle. You show me whatever it takes. You show me positive. You show me a problem solver. Hey, I'll hire you. I'll give you a job. Okay, we came here. We had four people here. We had 55 people in one office. That's in one office in Miami. We, we, we have more people working in the building than the building had when we got there. Because we want to expand. Now remember, live or succumb. And if you're not expanding into life, you're not living. Because it's risky. Would you agree? It's risky to expand. So people want to stay small. 28 million small businesses in America. There's 28 million small businesses. Anybody hit me on Twitter right now? Oh, I'm sorry. 136 people talking to Chief Dog. Well, I'm talking to you. Let me just go beat Facebook up for a second, right? See, these, these technologies are not, I'm not looking at them, am I? What am I doing here? Retreat. Number two is to retreat. I actually move backwards. I was going to buy a house, but I'm not. You know, my mom told me, don't buy a house. Too much money gets tied up. So I was going to do it, but now I don't. I was going to go to class. Now I don't go to class. I retreat. I was going to go to the event tonight, but now I'm not going to go to the event. I retreated from a decision I had already made. I'm going to talk to the girl, little man. I'm going to talk to the girl. Nah, I'm not going to do that, man. Okay. Third level is average. You just do what is expected of society. And the fourth one is, it's where the freaks live. 
massive amount of activity, 10x. Whatever you think it's going to take, you multiply it times 10. You want a million dollars? Make it 10 million. You want 100 million? Make it a billion. You just multiply everything. Like my daughter, my six-year-old, I, I taught her, I said, baby, once you learn how to count to 100, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to really count. <laughs> so learn how to count to 100. Once you do that, I'm going to show you a freaking trick on, 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 on how to count. It's magnificent. Okay, so she learned how to count to 100. When she got to 100, Papa, I, I can do it. What do I do now? You go straight to a million. You skip all the other numbers. <laughs> They're a waste of freaking energy. Count to 100, get the first 100 in. And skip. Learn how to multiply, don't learn how to add. You want to be in business? Multiply, don't add. Yeah. Add's too slow. You'll die. You'll die. You'll die in the period of time it takes to add. That's why the whole idea that your parents gave you about saving money, save your money, save your money, it's an old idea that's broken. It doesn't work today. The old idea of Dave Ramsey, how many of you know that, that, the name Dave Ramsey? Don't borrow money, don't ever borrow money, all debt is bad. It's an old idea, it's not true. These are old ideas. Susie Arman, don't do it, don't buy the car, don't purchase the car, don't lease the car. I watched Dave Ramsey do a video the other night on he would ride a bicycle to work before he would have a car pay. I'm like, dude, what are you, stupid? I mean, that's just the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard of in my life. You're going to ride a bike to work? Come on, man. You're pulling the leg, right? Like, you think a $300 car payment is somebody's problem? I'm trying to get rich here. You worried about $336? How are you ever going to make three million? See, your parents taught you this. They taught you how to think little and save and protect yourself. That was their job as parents. What they should have been telling you is don't be average. Do not do number three. Do nothing. Retreat. Do not do number three. Number three is the most dangerous level of activity of all of them because number three gets completely ignored in society. You did your job, man. You know the nine to five? How many of you heard this? I, I hate the nine to five. I didn't even know what nine to five meant. Somebody had to explain it to me. I'm like, what do you mean, man? What's wrong with 95? I work more than 95. They're like, no, not 95, 9 to 5. I'm like, what do you mean, man? 90, you mean 95 hours a week, right? No, man, 9 to 5. The reason people hate their job is they don't work enough. You, you hate your job because you keep retreating from it. You keep leaving your job. How, how do you think you feel about your marriage or your, or your relationship if you keep leaving it? You're not going to feel good about it. You keep leaving work, that's why you don't like work. Man, you want to love work, you've got to get obsessed about your deal. You need to have compulsive, obsessive, freaking like jack it up in my freaking arms, man. Tie me down, let's go, okay, I'm on the route. That's how your dreams come true, folks. Okay? You use Facebook, you use Twitter, you use YouTube, you use Periscope, Meerkat, you use strangers, you knock on doors to get attention, which takes massive action. Because you're trying to push, you're trying to push through tremendous amounts of noise. Tremendous amounts of noise in the marketplace. Your competition is not him trying to get the same job interview. You understand? My competition for that job is not him or him or him or her. My competition is this, the noise in the world. Susie Orman's competition for that job interview. Because she might be saying what? Don't hire anybody right now. CNBC dropped some bad news about housing. That's competition for you. You're being affected by, by, extra, you know, by, by things that are going on. The idea that you would ask somebody, are you hiring? Of course they're hiring. Who would not hire? Talent. You don't ask somebody if they're going to hire. You go in there and say, hey, you're going to make a mistake if you don't hire me. I am the only one you should look at. I happen to know you're not hiring people right now, and that's why I'm here. I've selected three companies in America to work for. You are one of those three. Okay? You're one of those three. I will not work for anybody except one of these three companies, period. Okay? You are my first choice. That's why I'm here. <laughs> you can read my resume, but this is the story. <laughs> you, better, you better figure this presentation out. Presentation out and you're going to get leftovers. You're going to get leftovers. How many heard this before? Be patient. Let me tell you what patient people end up with. Crumbs. You end up with crumbs, okay? Because I'm out there hustling. 
I'm out there trying to get the girl. I'm trying to get the business. I'm hustling. I'm in a hurry. Okay? I'm in a deal. I'm in a deal. I'm trying to buy a real estate deal right now. I call the guy and I tell the guy, I said, dude, I need this deal. I want this deal. I'll pay all the money. I'm your best buyer. I hang up the phone. My acquisition guy, who's about 29 years old, says to me, he's like, don't you think you like, like kind of showed your hand? I said, dude, that is my hand. I want to buy the deal. I haven't paid anything yet. I'm going to look weak. I'm going to look weak to the seller. Why? Because I got his attention. Right? Money follows attention. First thing you got to do is get attention. You got to get attention. You got so many ways to do that now, folks, okay? What you need to do now, how many of you have, have some time left in school? You got what, another semester or two? Good. You need to start practicing these skills. These skills are not just in books. This book is going to encourage you to start doing things at 10x levels. Start making some different decisions about how you're spending your time. Who are your friends? Who are your friends on Facebook? Who are your friends on Twitter? Okay? Who, who are you hanging out with? Who, you, who do you scope with or meerkat with or do YouTube videos? What are you watching every day? Do they, do, do, are they successful? You know, make a list of people that can help you in your career. Make a list of people that are in your life that cannot help you. You just need to know, these people cannot help me. Okay? Most of your family will go on that list. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're not going to go have Thanksgiving with them. It just means they can't help you. Okay? Your mommy can't help you in your business dreams. Otherwise, she'd have her own business. And then wouldn't have time for you. She might not have time for you. Okay? My three-year-old, my six-year-old, look, I'm out there hustling every day. My job is to show them the example of how they can multiply. I don't think you just read and write. Look at Jay-Z. I don't know if you can read or write or not. <laughs> I know it is. He makes some cake, can't he? Okay. It's a cake pack. Like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right? He overcame everything. Would you agree? So you can. You're here, you're here in a business school. You're in a beautiful, awesome, unbelievable school. So many opportunities. But look, there's a lot of people in your classes. Just look at them, judge them by those four levels of activity. None, <coughs> retreat, where's the criticizer live? Average or 10X? This 10X guy, he didn't have time to criticize anybody. Would you agree? He didn't have time to criticize anybody. The 10X guy goes to a movie and the movie's no good. He's like, hey, let's get out of here. He didn't criticize the movie, let's get out of here, it sucks. He just wants to get out and go do something else, right? These three guys, what are they doing all the time? Who are they? Who's sitting next to you? Who are you partying with? Who are you hanging out with? Who are you getting your information from? Who's your mentor? What books are you reading? Plenty of opportunity out there, folks. I'm telling you, I started with this. There's been no better time in my lifetime that somebody can go out and be successful. Never. In the history of my lifetime. I'm 57 years old today. I'm more alive in my business, more excited about my business than I have ever been because the opportunities are enormous. Those YouTube pages didn't exist five years ago. I didn't have a Facebook page or a Twitter account. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an unbelievable site for you to start connecting with professional people and start to write articles right now. How many of you, how many of you already know something? You've got a specialty that you already, like that's your deal. How many have a specialty? You need to start blogging about it, writing articles on it, expanding into the space now, become an authority and an expert in that space now. Make it your obsession to be the best, to be the one known, to be the one like. When I think of sales, I think of Grant Cardone. That, that, that was one of our games at, at my office. I want the whole world, when they think of the word sales, they think Grant Cardone's a guy. I want, I want my name to line up with marketing geniuses, okay? So we're starting to crack the code on that deal to where people are starting to actually call me without us ever calling ourselves this. They're like, dude, that guy's a marketing genius. He's a promotional machine. Pick what do you want to be, why is it important to you, and then you take every bit of energy you have and you put that on the fire until that fire gets so freaking gigantic, so big. You ever been in a big bonfire? Guy walks up, let's throw some more wood on. It's already hot, dude. There's this freak's like, let's throw some more on, right? You're like, oh my God, the guys, what's that called? Pyro. Pyro, man. That's me. How many pyros in the room? I'm like, man, let's make this thing so big. Let's, do, let's get this to be a bomb. Let's get it almost out of control. Let's burn the place down. I want to burn the place down. I want to get it so hot. You know, and this fire gets so hot and so amazing that everybody just finally, once they get over their fear, 
Because they're the people that, that's the retreat. Don't do it. Somebody could get hurt. I hope so. <laughs> See, I hope somebody gets hurt tonight, man. The party don't start until the police come. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you gotta be alive. You don't need to get arrested, right? Okay. But you know what I'm saying? You need to be, you need to be finding the edges. I gotta find the edges out here. Where's the edges of my life? Okay? Where 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 is too far, too far? Where where do I bring it in? Because most people are just doing the average thing. Anybody can do this, folks. The whole introvert, extrovert, I'm not an introvert, I'm this and that. Dude, that's just garbage. If your survival depends on it, you will extrovert. If you want those cookies bad enough, you will go talk to the gallery. Me and my wife can work together. So I look for the ideal situation, right? I look for, I try to create ideal scenes for me. What is my ideal state? What is my ideal girl? What is my ideal business? You know, what is the ideal scene for me? And then I want to expand into that concept of creating exactly what I want, not almost what I want. Like if I go to dinner and the food doesn't come the way I want, I send it back every time. Every time I send it back. I don't care how many times, how uncomfortable like she hates it. I'm like, they're going to send it back. Because if I get in the habit of eating stuff I don't want, I'm going to eat stuff I don't want. I'm creating the life I want. We live in America, man. This is America, but I was in the Czech Republic last week. This guy driving the car don't have a choice. You drive the car. He picks us up at the Four Seasons and said, how you doing, man? Right? I'm wearing Prague. I said, how beautiful city. I'm, I'm, I'm all positive. I'm excited. He's like, I'm sad. I'm like, you sad? Shit, I'm depressed. I got to get the car with you. You say, what you saying about me? What's, what's wrong with you, man? He's like, I'm sad. I got to work. I want to crack him in the face. Dude, man, you're lucky you got a job. He's like, I just want to be home. What, your wife there? Your kids there? No, I'm single. Now, let me just tell you what I didn't understand. They've been under 60 years. This is their first generation of capitalism, entrepreneurship, choices. They've been under 60 years of communist regime there, where you were told, you drive, you wash dishes, you work at hotel. No choices. Like, oh my God. It was where government took care of everybody, and in exchange for taking care of them, they provide housing for them, food for them, etc. right? But what happens is it broke the back. Because watch, live or succumb. If you look up the word expansion, expansion means to change. When I'm alive, when a baby's alive, what's happening to that little baby? Feet growing every day, things happening, teeth coming out. Dude, expansion is happening. Would you agree? Then what happens? You become a teenager, that's still happening. You, you are, I want to hit something. See, that, that's good, though. And then we tell you to tone it down, man. That, that was the mistake. We should have never told anybody to tone it down. That, that was the mistake your parents told them. Rain it in. Be cool. Be quiet. Balance. you got to find time. This is Dr. Seuss, man. Find time for everything. Balance. Find time management. It's garbage, man. You guys need to go all out all the time. Remove the brakes. The rear view mirrors. Take out that rear view mirror. You know, your windshield's this big. That's all you need. Accelerate as fast as you can go. If you're making a mistake, you'll find out soon. I find time for everything in my life. I spend more time with my kids than 99% of all parents on this planet. Right, Trump? I spend, I spend more time with my wife than 99% of all married couples, I guarantee you. Okay? I also work probably more than 99% of the people on this planet. I, I get eight hours of sleep every day. At least eight hours, unless I'm on the road traveling and I'm in some kind of jet lag thing. But most of the time I'm going to get to sleep. Everybody, people are lying to themselves. I don't have time. You got time, man. You're just a liar. You just don't make time. That's it. I mean, you got time. You got 24 hours. Do the math. 24 hours less 8 is 16. I got 16 hours. I go to class 4 hours a day. I got 12 hours left. 12 hours, dude. You got kids? Your kids don't want you more than about 20 minutes. <laughs> okay? Your kids are what? what they're 6 years old, 8 years old. They want you 20, 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. Come on, an hour max. And they're like, get the hell out of here. If they're, if they're freaking teenagers, they want you for two minutes. Give me some money. <laughs> right? And then it's like, you still got seven hours. What are you going to do? How many articles can you write in seven hours? I wrote my first book in three hours. I wrote an article today in 12 minutes. 
on Medium. I pushed it out on Medium. There's a short article, two paragraphs, shut that on Medium. This morning before I left my office, before I left my house, I wrote an article for LinkedIn. It took me maybe 22 minutes to write for it. It's called, uh, uh, I think it was on expansion actually. He's getting ready for this presentation. So you can do more. How many of you in the room can do more? Look, here's the choices. Nothing, retreat, average. All three of these will be overlooked by society. They end up scraps and some spectators. Oh, there's this choice. 10x. Okay, uh, we have, all right, go ahead. Yes, sir. This is a great question I get asked all the time. Robert back here, Robert's my, my, my video guy, by the way. Robert was working, where were you working before you came to work with me? But what was the job before this, when you came back? When I came back? Yeah. Oh, I was actually, uh, he hates, he hates telling the story, but it's a great story. He was working at Banana Republic, he hates it. He's a video guy. We ran an ad and said, we're looking for a video genius. What did the ad say? Something? See, at my company, we only look at a resume. If you send me a resume, I'm not going to look at it. Because you sending me a resume means i got to do something. Send me a video. We get to be a spectator. Okay, so we, we demand video. We will not look at resumes. Because I know what resumes have. Resumes are lies. They're full of lies and exaggerations. Okay? <laughs> Tell me to my face. <laughs> so you can send me a 60 second video. So we tell people, look, send a 60 second video. When Robert saw that, did you ever been asked for a video? Yeah. That's what he does. He's in the video business. Send me a video. What'd you think when I said that? Okay, he sends me the video. We're like, we like that. What did I learn from his video? Can he even take an order? 60 second video. It's all I want. I didn't ask for some editing, graphics, See, if he just sent me all that, because we have people do that, send me a four-minute video with graphics, editing. I'm like, dude, I don't want you on my team. You take too long. <laughs> and you don't follow directions. I said 60 seconds. <laughs> now, other people do this. Well, what do I put in a video? Yeah, you're not going to be on the team either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, so he's like, the question is what, the reason I went to Robert is because Robert watches me beat all this medium stuff. My favorite social media is all of them. There is no favorite. If you have a favorite, you guys don't understand social media. If you have a favorite social medium, it is because you respect it. Okay? It's like asking me, Grant, what is your favorite way to get to work? Well, it depends. Which one gets me there? I'll use a muddy road. I'll use an airplane. I'll use a helicopter. i use a waterway. Right? I transport myself to work. I mean, if I can figure out how to freaking just like, uh, I'm in, man. Who's in? Good at it. We're doing it already. When I can communicate to this many people online right now with a, with a tweet, okay? What, what, what do you guys think this is? This is an idea. I have an idea. I throw it up on here. Let's see what they said to us right here. Let's see if anybody's talking about it. Uh, anybody say anything? That reached 1,500 people. 1,600 people like it. Four comments, people talking about it, all right? Uh, oh, here's a picture right now, live from. So this is all day long, this is just today. See, here's one, brochures can't close deals. That reached 9,500 people. Which one's my favorite? They're all my favorite, man. You know, I'm committed to my wife and my kids. The rest, I'll use them all. <laughs> okay, I'm in California, I like California. California doesn't treat me right, I leave. They don't drink your right in Florida? I'll leave here, man. I'm not a post. I'm not a sidewalk. I'm a human being. I move. Do you know the average American lives within 10 miles of where they were born? Hey, you guys got to move today, man. You got to be mobile. Okay? Don't tell anybody I said that. You guys don't need to buy a house. Don't buy a house. Stay away from houses. You need to move right now. You young people in the room, y'all need to move, hop, jump, go where opportunities are. I smell some opportunity. You go there. Okay, you need to leave the country, you go there. You go wherever you have to go, China, India. You go where the dream is. You're not, your, your job is not to take care of your parents. Your job is to take care of your dreams. Your dreams, you fund your dreams, you take care of your dreams, you can probably send some money to your mom and dad. Priyanka? Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what does a college degree mean to me? Well, 
it means to me that you, first of all, I would not judge you based on one thing. You know, when I look at you, you stood up, you, 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 you say, hey, thank you, you have manners. See, I'm going to look at the whole package. The fact that you have a college degree is very important to me. Like, with the whole package. You know? Now, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you guys know what I'm saying? Now, now, now if the package is, I got a college degree, but you look like you could be a problem, or you're apathetic, or you're succumb, you've succumbed, or you don't know what your dreams are, or you're like, I'm like, what can you do for me? What could you do for my company? Sit down. You don't know, man. You need that answer right now. You need that answer. Because you're going to go back into this. What do you need? No, what can you do? There's something you can do for my company right now, I guarantee you, that I would hire you. There's at least six or eight positions we could hire in this room at any given time right now. Right now, you can tell me, what can you do for me, man? We want to reach seven billion people. I want seven billion people to know my name before I, leave, before I, before I pass the use of this body. Can you help me reach seven billion people? I'll hire you right now. You've got to be able to tell me. Now, does that come with a college degree? Great. Awesome. That's probably more for you, though, than it is for me. At least you completed something. That's good. You know, when, a lot of people go to college. You, thank you very much. Okay. You know, the 64% the, uh, the, uh, of all people that go to college are still not out after four years. It's a shame. It's a shame. 44% are still not out after six years. See, the problem I, have, I do have with college is the intention that you came here for. Because I think some people are coming to college because they don't want to go to work. They don't want to go face the beast. And the beast is out there. The beast, man. The beast, that's, that's the adventure out there. It's not in here. They can't get you out of here fast enough. You guys need to get finished, get out, and go out there and say, man, I can't wait to get cut up. Because this is going to be fun. This man. I know I don't have a mic, but I don't think I need it. You sound beautiful. Give her a big hand. try to do in your life, man, is really acknowledge people as much as you can. Get in the habit of acknowledging everybody for anything. Because you open a flow up. You're opening flows up. Okay? When you have a flow that's open, you're, you're, you're now open to flows of receiving that. So I get what you're saying about um, breaking the rules and breaking out and getting away from the traditions of why okay, maybe I taught you since I could be some You should not want to get rich. You should get want to get wealthy. Okay. Rich is 
is an insult to wealth. Jesus more taught this. My parents, our parents should have taught us, don't be poor. You don't need to be poor. See, what they did was say, don't use drugs, don't have sex, don't do this. They should have said, don't be poor. Because you don't need to be, man. Even if you're born poor in this country. It's a shame that people are born poor. But you don't need to stay poor no matter what your situation is. Yes, but you need to follow the mindset up with action. A lot of action. A lot of action. So can we ask Mrs. Cardone? Sure, go ahead. Mrs. Cardone loves questions. <laughs> okay, so actually, Kyra has been very nice to about the question. Uh, my real question was because we were very inspired by your story from the beginning. Persistence. Yeah, the persistence after she been saying no to you for 26 months. <laughs> Oh, the final thing, the final thing, the final thing was that I found out she liked to shoot guns. And I called her and I said, hey, I rented the L.A. Uh, the LA uh, shooting club. Uh, would you go with me tomorrow? And she said yes, and then, but then, <laughs> babies all over the place. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. And the real question for her is, what did she see like, in you to actually make you oh. <laughs> Why, why are you we're all, 
Huh? My point is... Come okay. on, what is it? Yeah. Okay. And I share your point. Okay. Here's the deal. Here's your question. Let me okay. tell you what your question is. Yeah. Can everybody get rich? We're all rich already, man. Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay? You agree with me? Look, everybody in this room has been to become a millionaire in your lifetime. It's almost impossible in America to not become a millionaire. The average income in America for 275 million people is 52,000, just under 52,000 a year. They're going to work over 20 years as a million bucks. You will decide because of whatever. Oh, man, I don't want to break out. I just want to keep it right there. I'm good. And so some guy in Pakistan is going to decide, no, man, I'm good. I'm not leaving. You know why he's never going to have it any different? Because he's not leaving, man. Go where the freedom is. Or don't. That's it. And, and so, can everybody get rich? Everybody that wants to get rich can get rich. Those that give up on it probably won't. Then there's a whole other band of people that get wealthy. Wealthy is what you want, because rich is just about money. Wealth is what I think you'd be more interested in. Wealth, freedom, health, choices, okay? To be able to run a business and say, you know what, I don't want you as a customer. I don't like you as a customer. Pass. How many of you would like to be in that business? I don't want you as a customer. You're not welcome into my school. I don't want that. Okay? To, to be able to have, to be able to help my church. That's, to be able to go to a third world country and spend the time and energy and go there and actually help people there and educate because I have enough money to go over there and spend the time. To be able to travel the world, that's wealth. How many agree with that? Okay? To be able to spend time with my three-year-old, my six-year-old, to be a good example. But, but, but those are indications of wealth, not money. So thank you very much for your question. Hi, good evening, Grant. It's a great evening. Thank, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm president of an internet company, and we're very culturally driven. And I was wondering, um, culture is a big buzzword now in Facebook and Google. Yeah. You know, it's a common thread. How do you measure culture other than retention? And how much weight do you put on culture? Um, having a yeah. hard time balancing, yeah. driving those KPIs. You, you live here? You, live here. Yeah, live you here. should come visit our offices in Miami. Okay. And if you watch, I'd love to do that. Every day we have a sales meeting at 906. It happens at 906, not 906, 30. It happens at 906, no matter what, no matter who's there, no matter rain, sheet, sleet, snark, whatever. 906, we have a meeting. Every day that meeting starts with our successes, what's happening, what's working, our goals, our intentions. We have a culture there that is unbelievable. Also, to have culture, you need to get rid of people. You cannot have a strong culture and keep. A culture uh, vulture. Yeah, exactly. Because look, there's only two choices. If you look it up in the death, live or succumb. And if you don't get rid of succumb, succumb will bring down everybody that's trying to live. So that's why I say, look, get rid of the break. When we want to grow our organization, we don't have people. We get rid of people. When I want to grow my company, I actually, if I'm pushing with this kind of energy all the time, this is my energy since 6 o'clock this morning. So with a nap. It took a nap today. So when I push this hard, when I push this hard and the company's not going up, somebody in my company has got to put them there. If I just need to find out who that is, relieve them of duty, ask them to go succumb some, in some other zip code. So come to our offices sometime. Okay, I'll do that. I'll be on here. Um, lastly, I'm a, I'm a 10Xer, so I'm hiring. Anyone who wants to talk to me after, taking advantage of an opportunity. Yeah, All right, thank you. Thank you. We have the last five questions. Thanks, George. Anyone? Uh, my name is Justin Rivas, and I want to thank you. Come on, man. You know what? You changed me, dude. Uh, about eight months ago, I'm a president of my own uh, entrepreneurial uh, thing. I started my own manufacturing representative. Um, I didn't graduate high school. This is my son. I had him when I was 16 years old, and I planted that same seed you planted in me, dude, and I, and I wanted to thank you for that. He started his own company. He's in a program, and and uh, he had a question for you. But I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come back. Thank you, Brett. Thank you for having me. The opportunity to kind of you shed some wisdom on, on me. Uh, I just graduated high school. I got invited to a Nifty program, and right now I'm, I'm a young entrepreneur getting my business going up and running. Um, me being young and me wanting to get investors in my business, uh, I need to grab that attention that, you, that you're saying uh, that, I, that I need to seek. What kind of things can I do to really grab that attention from the start and really get these people to buy into me and what I want to do and all my success? Like I'm looking at videos of successful people to do yourself, yeah. trying to get into reading now and really trying to find all the kind of ways to really... Well, what is your business? 
Uh, right now, I'm going to be hosting basketball tournaments all throughout Miami. Good. Dade, so you need, to do, you, you need to become the expert on hosting basketball, if, if, if this basketball, if I understood that right. Yeah. Everything to do with that space, you need to become that guy. So video, audio, podcast, articles, blogs, post them. I mean, everything, bro. Every post you do on Facebook, you guys that have a, a social medium, your avatar needs to be your face, okay? Not a dog, not an egg, <laughs> not your kid. It needs to be your face. You are already a business. Everybody in here is a business. You're a business already. Your business is identified by your brand, okay? So if you're not selling eggs, don't have an egg as an avatar on Twitter. <laughs> he needs to become the freaking guru, go-to guy. Whatever the medium, I don't care about his space. You don't need an education, bro. I mean, you be nice. I'm just saying, that's not going to change what you need to do anyway. It'd be awesome if you had an education. But w what you're going to have to do in today's environment is not going to be any different because you have it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Just started out over. MBA, finance. My yeah. question to you. Yes, sir. Why you pick Miami? Out of all the places in the world, you can find me for a reason. That, that, that is a great story, bro. I'd like to hear it one day. Okay, I told my wife, they started raising taxes on me, the, the, the government of California. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, seriously, that's not see, why Miami, that's why I left California. I'm just but do you see Miami growing as like the New York? No, man, let me answer the question, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I wrote, write the governor of California, I said, look, man, you do this, and I'm leaving. Okay, I'm taking my little four little deals. I'm not a big guy. I'm not an Apple computer. I'm a guy out there grunting, grinding every day. You do this deal. I've been there 25 years. Started every one of my companies there. Loved being there. Didn't mind paying 10%. When they went to 13, I'm like, I'm leaving here if you did this deal. And most of it, was, it wasn't about the money, just the money. It was about the choice. It was about freedom. See, this goes back to the gentleman uh, that I was talking to about the wealth, man. What Freedom. Okay, I'm not going to have this invoked on me anymore. So I told my wife, I said, we're leaving. So we put our house up for sale. Before I left there, I got a bunch of media about it. Anything you do, you should get attention for it. <laughs> Take a stand. Take a stand about it and get a camera in your face. Money follows attention. Your company cannot grow without attention. It is impossible. All great companies and great brands get attention. If you don't like getting attention, get over it. Get attention. Okay? So, we didn't know where we were going to go. We put the house in the market. I started looking for, hey, I'm leaving. I'm going to tax free states. Why not? Okay? So, I look at Tennessee. I look at uh, 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 Washington. Uh, we looked at Texas. I flew into Austin. And I happened to be doing a gig in Miami. I didn't want to come to Florida because I think Florida is pretty boring. I got a partner that's been in, uh, uh, for 22 years, been in Orlando for 22 years, would never consider moving to Orlando. It's not in my freaking life. Okay? And I got offices there for 22 years. I was doing a gig in South Beach, a speaking gig like this. I was hired to go do a deal. I got out of the airport. I'm driving across the causeway, and I called the lane. I still remember the day like it was yesterday. I'm videoing the drive over the causeway. I'm passing Star Island. And I'm, I'm like, Elena, this is where we're moving. Pack up the bags. We're moving to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> My first trip here, I made a decision to the Costco. We moved here without knowing where we were going to live, where, where we were going to stay. We didn't know where our office was. I didn't talk to any of my employees. Speed, man. Move with speed and certainty. Even when you don't know where the hell you're going. Move with speed and certainty. So Miami? Miami is the place you ought to be. So they packed up their bags. I was thinking about going back to New York, but... I was thinking about that, man. Thinking, why do you want to think like that, man? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank you for the presentation. I'm a big fan of my disciple of, uh, you know, presentations. My favorite being the last lecture by Ryan Posh. I think you killed it. You know, I'm one of my favorites. Yours got to be right up there. Oh, but, nice. um, my question to you, just kind of to pick your brain a little bit, is do um, you have to pick five people to work with? Uh, let's think about opinion leaders like uh, Richard Branson or like, you know, Tony Robbins. Who would be your top five? Man, five people. See, see, that's a great question. The way to work with people, the way to work with people today is to read their books. I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, I can have 50 mentors. 
You know, read their books, read their articles, study them, find out what they do. I mean, I would love to spend time on Warren Buffett. Do I want an autograph from Warren? Nah, you know, do I want to do dinner with him? Would I pay a million dollars to have dinner with him? No, I wouldn't. You know, I'd rather read his book for thirty bucks. You know, I, I want to consume the content. He, for, when somebody sits down and writes a book, the beautiful part about writing a book is all the stuff they elected not to put in that book. The guy had to make a decision to put something in a book. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like, you're actually taking a moment to say, I don't know about that. You know? Like, like tonight, you get to decide. Expand or contract. That's what tonight is about. So when somebody asks you, hey man, what, what did the guy talk about? Expand or contract. That's it. Live or die. Get big or die. Because you're not going to stay the same and you're not going to stay small. You can be an introvert if you want to be. I'm an introvert, basically. I, I'm a basic, basic introvert. In certain situations, I will introvert. And I won't be all extroverted like this is common. If you saw me on a plane, I was by myself, I probably wouldn't talk to you the whole time. Get my little blanket up and go over me. I don't talk to you now. So, so all I'm saying is like you've got to get uncomfortable, be willing to do whatever you've got to do, to get where you've got to go, read the books. I mean, I, I can't tell you there's three or four or five people. There's there's dead people that I would love to talk to. I need to read the books. I can relate to that. I mean, I, you can't always give a straight answer. And that's actually a better answer than I expected. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.